spectacular in this first half. Let's go to the BC sidelines to Jeff Leyland. Jeff! Guys, helmets flying everywhere. Jason Claremont so pumped. G. Roy Simon just came up to me and said, keep doubling me all day because Action Jackson is open, guys. And that's why we talked about it, Julio, why yep. they had to get other guys involved in the offense because you know they're going to try and throw a blanket over Simon, and that means somebody else is going to be open. If you're Richie Hall, you're the defensive coordinator for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, you're watching game tape, you've seen it all year. You're saying to your defense, listen, guys, don't let G. Roy Simon beat you. He's the only guy out there that they feel that can beat you. So you need some guys to step up, and the Lions have gotten that in a big way. James Johnson, the corner for Saskatchewan, wanted a flag on a push-off, and I don't know. They touched him. It was close. But they haven't flagged a lot of on defense either uh, in the way of interference. Kickoff for the Lions. Dorsey from his own 20, 30, 35, 40, near the sidelines to the 45, and piled up at about the 47, and that's where the Riders will start with 12 seconds left in the half 59 yard kickoff and a 32 yard return by Dominic Dorsey who fumbled a punt earlier in the second quarter that led to a BC field goal Lions have added a touchdown since then and are up by 26 points the Riders scored 25 unanswered points last week against Calgary to come back and win that football game they're going to need more than that here and the way that, the way that defense that is defense playing right is playing, now I don't hey, know. and you, you talk about them shutting down Kenton Keith in this. If Kenton Keith is going to be any part of this offense, it's going to be as a receiver because that running game is going to be gone now as they're going to have to try to throw everything downfield. They got 12 seconds to work with here at their own 47. Kerry Joseph shotgun. Four man rush. Joseph under pressure gets the pass away deep downfield. Marsh in coverage. And a great catch made by Dominguez at the 15 yard line with four seconds left. 48 yard pass Joseph to Dominguez, who's Able to use that height to get up over top of Marsh and make the grab. Nice catch by Dominguez. Yeah, it was a great catch. It surprised me that the Lions, with 12 seconds left, would go man-to-man. -man. This is just straight man-to-man -man coverage. And Dante Marsh, who was playing about 10, 15 yards off of him, that's a good catch. So on comes Kanji to attempt a field goal for the Riders. This will be the last play of the half. It's a 22-yarder from the left hash mark. Four seconds left. Wally thought about throwing up the replay play. Oh, like a good catch to me. So a 22-yard field goal attempt for Kanji went from 40 earlier in the half. And Wally, Wally Bono throws out the Wally Bono throws out the replay flag at the last second. There is no play. So they're going to look at the replay, and I'm not sure why. Well, I'm assuming they're questioning whether or not whether or not uh, Dominguez had control of the ball inbounds, Julio. It looked like a good catch to me. Hey, throw or the maybe flag. Wally's just playing yeah, games. Yeah. and throw the flag. You can get a guy down an injury and just create some more time for yourself. If you're going to try to freeze the kicker, throw the flag. So referee Glenn Johnson over talking to Wally Buono, asking him, what he wants reviewed. BC is challenging whether it's a legal catch. I'll review the play. Let's go down to the BC sideline to Jeff Leyland. Jeff. Guys, at first, uh, a lot of players were asking Wally to challenge, and he was yelling at his players saying, look, it's a fair catch. All of a sudden, new information must have come from upstairs. Chapdelaine runs over. Wally's running on the field, and the flag is out. So uh, a little bit of a change at the last second, guys. Well, the well, ball was bobbled it around was being there. bobbled, but, boy, is there enough evidence there on replay to overrule the call on the field. Well, it's you can't see it from that angle because Dante Marsh is right in. It's the one from the end zone that gives us the best look. Ooh, I don't know. Well, it depends on whether or not he was out of bounds by the time he brought it back in. It did not hit the turf. The ball definitely did not hit the turf. The but was he in bounds? Was he in bounds by the time he got control of it? It's too hard. It's tough to tell. So the Lions have challenged the play. Glenn Johnson's got his head inside that Pac-Man machine down there. <laughs> Getting a couple of games in before half. <laughs> if I had to guess, Julio, 
it's a completion. I just don't think there's enough evidence to overturn it. It has to be conclusive. It has to be. You're right. But that ball was out. Justin Morneau, by the way, of the Minnesota Twins, New West native, will be joining Scott Rintoul for the D.C. Dodge Dino's halftime report coming up in a couple. He's a big boy. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's not Jay. He's a it's huge. The referee, Glenn Johnson, is still taking a look at replays. It'll be a 21-yard field goal attempt for Luka Kanji, assuming the catch stands. It keeps showing the same replay. You can't see the ball from there. I don't know, Rick. I think it's a catch. Here he comes. All right, we'll get the call. Upon review, the player did in fact catch the ball, keep control, and come down in bounds. Ruling on the field stands. So Luka Kanji on to attempt the field goal. As that play is the Riders' biggest offensive play of the night. Be a 22-yard attempt. Rocky Butler the holder. From the left hash mark. High snap, and it's short. And the Lions got to try and kick it out of the end zone. Javi Glatt picks it up. He's going to try and run it out, gets a block, and he won't. So they're going to have to concede the single point. As the half comes to an end, it was a bad snap, and Butler never got it placed properly, Julio. And I don't know why the Lions didn't have yeah. somebody back in the end zone. Well, because it was at the 20-yard line. They figured if you're going to have a kickback team, you'd never expect the ball to barely cross the line it, it was a bad snap Butler just got it down but Kanji had his timing all messed up and the Lions will concede the single point as we go back down to field level to Jeff Layla Jeff thanks very much Kelly Bates with me a wild finish there but talk about the half a great start for you guys overall all around I think uh, we've come up with a, with a level of intensity that they have not been able to match thus far and uh, our whole thing from the start of the game has been to play four quarters, and we've got two left to go. The battle in the trenches, you guys are dominating, and you're wearing the defense down. They've been on the field the whole game. That's been our plan, and we're just going to keep on putting it. We're going to keep putting our foot on their throat and push until the game's over. Talk a bit about Dickinson quickly, and just how Jackson, I mean, he's wide open if you're going to double D-Roy. You know what? Uh, uh, the guys are playing well. They're executing the game plan to a tee. Dickie's a precision, it's precision uh, to watch, and it's, it's just been fun. we got to keep doing it. Kelly Bates, best of luck, second half. Hopefully the Lions come out on top. Rick? Thank you, Jeff and Kelly. Well, Julio, that's about as good as a half of football can go. Yeah, it, that reminds us of really the first game that these two teams played and how uh, surgical, really, the offense was and how well the defense played. All three asset, or facets of the game, the Lions have dominated, and it's going to be a long road uphill for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders come this second half. Lions 29, Saskatchewan 4 at halftime. What?